So let's take a look at some melee tactics weapons today. Uh, I kind of wanted to go with two different melee tactics weapons that achieve completely different functions, but kind of do the same thing as well. So we're looking at, uh, today we're looking at the shrapnel axis and the tentacle. And so what shrapnel axis does is uh, it spawns from the demons. Uh, and what it does, it has two different types of attacks. It has a ranged attack and it has a melee attack. And the melee attack is stronger than the uh, ranged attack but um, they, the range attack becomes pretty powerful after a couple, uh, after a couple swings. So I'll kind of try to show you guys what, what I mean by that. Yeah, so as you can see right there, uh, the swings got harder and harder for the shrapnel axis as we uh, go. And... It's a uh, five hit combination, and the fifth hit is pretty slow, so you want to make sure that you're a uh, good range away. And uh, yeah, so in general, I kind of recommend using shrapnel axes if you have something else to support it with. And we have that support in the form of tentacles. So what tentacle is is it's a also a brutality uh, survival, or I'm sorry, brutality. Uh, what should we call it? Uh, brutality tactics weapon and what uh, our tentacle does is you reach out you grab an opponent and as you come in you press the button again and then you get a critical hit a pretty useful weapon so the idea behind this build is you trap enemies with the wolf trap uh, you use your uh, shrapnel axes up close so that you can uh, do a lot of damage and some ambient damage can be done with the um, double cross pneumatic and any really any turret can be used uh, right there shows off the capability of the ranged aspect of the whatchamacallit of the shrapnel axes and you can already you can see those uh, tentacle crits right there it, it does a great job of uh, giving you some crowd control because it all it kind of has like a pierce all sort of thing when it comes to the critical hits. So let's say, for example, that you hit an enemy with the tentacle and it's part of this large mob. And there's going to be plenty of opportunities where I'm going to be able to show you guys this. Uh, but let's say it hits someone and we want to uh, do some damage uh, to the entire mob. So as soon as you uh, press the uh, button for the crit, so right as you approach that opponent, uh, what you can do is you can actually um, press it a whole bunch of times and uh, you should be able to actually do a lot of crits from there. Also goes through shields and uh, for thornies um, it does not actually uh, do any damage back to you so that's really nice to use. So close range, I'm going to be using shrapnel axis more. Uh, long range, I'm going to be using the tentacle. And so this build is designed to be fast because um, you hit an enemy with the uh, shrapnel axis and uh, then you can kind of launch into the tentacle for enemies that are a bit farther away. Uh, and again, Wolf Trap does the job of just uh, keeping enemies at bay and it'll especially be useful for elites uh, early game especially early game and bosses too uh, and with bosses it doesn't necessarily work out with uh, cer certain bosses like Hand of the King because he kind of just runs past them and then collector stomps past them so that can be a little annoying but other than that uh, Wolf Trap is going to be extremely good uh, for this run And mutations are going to be especially key in this run. So the first mutation I want to grab is Predator. And Predator, Predator and Initiative are the two uh, mutations that I'm going to grab. So I'll start off with Predator. So Predator is a mutation. It's one of the new mutations for 1.4. And it actually comes from one of the new enemies. And that enemy, I believe, is the Automata. Automata, something like that. And that can be found in the uh, Clock Tower. And so if you hit... An enemy with a melee attack, you will go invisible for a certain amount of seconds depending on how much tactics you have. 
So right now it's only going to be 1.9 seconds, but that number should increase to I think three seconds later on. Uh, just uh, it works the same as Soldier's Resistance. Just the more um, you have in a stat, the more the effect is. And uh, initiative is going to be uh, so the first melee attack that you do will cut will do x amount of more damage. So it'll do a lot more damage. So right away you can see how good that invisibility is because I'm able to get, knock something into the enemy and for mobs that's going to be especially useful because they can't see what's going on here. So I can I can spend basically an entire biome uh, invisible if I wanted to. Well, I can, but um, it's very it's very very doable. And I would say this. Schema and initiative are all excellent, excellent uh, uh, mutations. They are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, each one has a very specific purpose. I love using schema in uh, melee uh, in melee uh, tactics builds, especially uh, when it comes to uh, what should we call it, uh, like a phaser assassin stagger sort of thing. Or phaser, anything, honestly. But just because phaser, uh, it counts as part of the schema. So you can uh, use schema with phaser, and then your next attack is going to do a ton of damage, along with the damage that you're going to be getting from the phaser itself. Uh, but um, we're going to be using initiative and predator to start off. And uh, predator, the invisibility from Predator is already paying huge dividends for me. Although I think the bats can see me, so that's a little weird. Not sure why. And the other mutation I want to grab is actually going to be interesting, and I'll explain it to you guys in detail when I actually get there. But right now, it's not that important. But um, you're gonna, maybe you guys will notice this. But I'm gonna be um, essentially doing something that I don't normally do in my runs. That is going to be pretty interesting for the long, for the for the uh, for the long haul. And I'm just kind of speeding through all this. I didn't take a single hit in uh, Prisoner Quarters, and I haven't taken a single hit here either. Like, I'm already at 60. I haven't even uh, gotten to a curse chest yet. And worth to note, very important to note, um, so for Predator, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, for Predator, the uh, Down Smash, if it kills an enemy, that also counts as a, a melee kill. So, that means you get the invisibility on those.
So that was an extremely close call right there. I I thought I was dead, so when I survived, I was just like, what just happened? But if you get out of the poison in like less than like a quarter second, basically you gotta jump out as soon as you hit the poison, then you should be fine. Um, I don't know the exact timing of it, but either way, like I, I got lucky because I was not intending on doing that. So right now, I'm just kind of shredding enemies, especially because I'm invisible. So I'm actually doing a little bit more damage than I had expected. Because Shrapnel Axes is, it has a little power, but it's not as powerful as a lot of other weapons. And Tentacle is pretty powerful, but it's not always like the most, like, whatchamacallit, it's not always the most reliable weapon in terms of like a sure thing damage. I was just paranoid after that uh, close call. I was very paranoid about hitting poison. So I'm just trying to stay there and be a coward so I don't have to deal with uh, any... Is that another close call with the poison? So, uh, luck was on my side for this one. And you're going to agree even more as this uh, run continues because there were a lot of moments where I could have gotten hit or I could have died. And given this build, you really shouldn't be taking any hits. <laughs> I was just really trying to do my best to avoid that elite, and we're able to do it. So now we're fine aggroing the elite. So we knock him out very, very quickly. And the... Just the base synergy of Shrapnel Axis and Tentacle is really good because what Shrapnel Axis does is give you a ranged option while you're in melee combat, whereas Tentacle does the exact opposite. It gives you a uh, it gives you a melee option while being a uh, ranged weapon, really, and it makes it so much more. It's just a very unique playstyle, and it's not a build that I had seen yet. But I just wanted to try it out, and I, I think like it worked out well. Like this is not the first one I've had with this. Uh, not the exact build, but a very similar build. But it did have uh, shrapnel axes and tentacle. Um, very very similar build. I almost I tried doing it in brutality. It uh, it can work in brutality, but it's more efficient with a. Uh, tactics build because of the fact that uh, Predator exists and um, Initiative exists and Schema exists and all these different uh, uh, mutations exist. Yeah, so Poisons the Enemy is a pretty easy um, pretty easy grab for me. And it's double purple, like, what more can you ask for, right? <laughs> well, I guess if you really wanted to, you could maybe ask for, um, 100% to poison, along with poisons the enemy, but no, seriously, like, <clears throat> like, that damage over time is really gonna help it in this run. Not that this run really needs it, but it's always nice to have stuff like that.
choked on my own spit. How does that even happen? <coughs> and in a very mob friendly type of um, biome, this is going to be so nice to have. The invisibility. As you saw it right there, like that was in kind of the mob of the of the Rampager and the Sweeper is really bad because <clears throat> in order to deal with the Rampager, you actually you have to parry or you have to uh, roll. You have to roll against him as well, or you have to roll towards him as well. Now with the Sweeper, what you have to do is you have to uh, jump. Now you can see where that causes problems. I keep forgetting that I was invisible, and that was why the bomber didn't actually uh, aggro me. If I waited longer, then he probably would have, but it didn't really matter at that point. So, uh, like I said earlier, the down smash does count as a melee um, attack. So, uh, what it comes with, essentially, is uh, that plus initiative. I get invisibility and I can knock out enemies uh, just by using the down smash. Like right there. <coughs> a very intentionally left enemies on the map for uh, curses. So I wanted to aggro the uh, Rampager into the Cleaver because it would uh, basically do a lot more damage. Especially because he was protected by the Legendary Altar, so I would have uh, had to deal with, essentially, uh, nothing good in terms of uh, damage output. And this invisibility is helping me so much with those Bombers because they aren't aggroing me. Otherwise, I have four going at me at once. Even right there for that uh, sweeper, um, I was able to use the tentacle on him because he was so far away. And if I had tried to run towards him, I probably would have run out of invisibility. <laughs> Watching that tentacle in action is so satisfying. Like, I'm not even kidding. <clears throat> just watching it just clear out mobs is something special. Like, like 1.4 really got it right with these weapons. <clears throat> even Flint. Like, I hate Flint. But, even Flint, like... <clears throat> it... Really care. It really is a good characterization of uh, concierge, which concierge sucks anyway. So bits at the uh, flint will suck. I'm just kidding. Don't get. Don't come at me for that. I know people like the flint out there. I just. I hate it. I think it's awful. And I hate it so much. I'm gonna do a run with it soon. So. 
Because, like, the three times that I've tried using it, I ended up taking, like, max stack of malays, like, almost every single time. So, my opinion of it is probably not the highest, I would say. So I'm going to go backwards and then uh, kill all the enemies that were there. Nothing very interesting. Sometimes you just got to lay down all of your uh, skills. And then... Uh, use the rest of your uh, weapon arsenal to uh, take care of business. Yeah, this invisibility thing has really helped me out so far. And honestly, I never really used Predator before. I didn't really see a need for it. But yeah, no, they're, they're, it's it's really, really good. Don't sleep on it. Initiative is great. Schema is awesome. But Predator is probably where it's at. Because Predator is the reason this build is going so well. And what's nice about uh, Tentacle in conjunction with Shrapnel Axis is that uh, Tentacle actually will give me a lot of range. So if I'm running out of invisibility, I can use it like right there, right as the invisibility wears off and get it right back. Because that range is so good. That's going to be the next curse chest. <coughs> and for the record, I do like... Um, what is it? I do like double crossbowmatic better than heavy turret. I don't think heavy turret's good anymore ever since 1.3 hit. <clears throat> uh, so, I mean, I will be taking a double crossbowmatic at some point. The cleaver is just there because of the crazy affixes that I have on it right now. If you had noticed yet, I didn't take an and take acceptance on this run. Cause right around this point is when I would be taking acceptance, but I don't know, just sometimes especially lately, I just don't feel like taking acceptance anymore. I don't know why. I feel like ten curses isn't that much. And but the only problem is like sometimes it can be a little stressful to like deal with bosses. Um, like making sure you don't have to deal with bosses, that is. I mean, the only one that doesn't give me that much stress is Concierge, but everything else just uh, kind of lives rent-free in my head as far as uh, no trying to no-hit. Like, to this day, I've only ever no-hit Concierge once. Or, uh, no, not Concierge, like Conjectivious. Only ever no-hit the boss once, which is why I usually go for Concierge, because uh, easier to no-hit, easier to get a legendary item right off the bat. Um... And also certain builds just don't work with uh, Conjectivities. Like, this build doesn't work with it. Um, just grounded builds in general have a tough time. 
Um, what was I going to say, though? Um... Yeah, I think the other boss that I know hit a lot is Timekeeper, and that's a late Hand of the King, weirdly enough. I don't know why. Because I actually suck against Hand of the King. Giant have actually no hit more time than Conjunctivity, I think. And the last boss collector have no hit three or four times at this point. So that's the thing I was talking about earlier. So the reason I'm going for recovery is because uh, with Predator, I get a really nice uh, invisibility. Uh, I get a really nice invisibility for a few seconds, and I can uh, pull off some combos. And Velocity allows me to continue these combos. This is doing a lot of damage. And I'm not even using the I'm not even using the melee portion of this build. And that was an easy, easy no hit for me. Like very, very stress-free. Like I think I only had to use the tentacle like once or twice. That legendary tentacle looks really, really nice right now. Just great synergy all around. <coughs> Keep in mind, I haven't taken a single hit this entire run so far. So that's kind of a, uh, that's a first for me. I've never gone this far without uh, taking a single hit. Somehow I didn't get hit by anything. Uh, I still don't know how that happened. But I still have the speed buff, so now I can go and do my thing while invisible. And is velocity, velocity needed? No, it's not. But maybe I could have gone for something like support or... Um, emergency triage, but hey, this build is fast-paced, and it'll allow me to keep getting uh, faster buffs, because uh, what, I'll, what I'm able to do from this build is because I can move so quickly, um, I can just keep working on mobs. Kind of get in there before the kamikazes come, just so I can uh, deal with them, if this is a cursed chest. That was my thinking at the time. Uh, 
And unfortunately for me, that was my first uh, time getting hit. And it was because I didn't think that the... I thought the tentacle would kill, honestly. It was an okay calculation to make. It didn't end up doing that much damage to me because I already have a lot of health. That was another thing I wasn't expecting to happen to me. And that was my second time getting hit. I believe that was the last time I got hit in stilt. I want to say. And I do, again, leave enemies on the map. And unfortunately... They place the they place the towers in a very unfortunate spot where I can't come and get it. So now I'm in a kind of a precarious position where I actually have to go and get the second uh I have to go and get the second key looks like. I'm just leaving enemies on the map because I do have some cursed chests left. And that's unfortunate because I I always go through those spikes because I don't feel like getting that second key. The faster I can get out of stilt the better. And that is for sure a curse chest. So now we're gonna go do our thing. So in a tight space like that, uh, do whatever you can to just not get hit. Like, in all honesty, it's really not worth it sometimes. And we got the next curse chest coming up right here. And do I see a third curse chest coming up? That means 26 kills uninterrupted. Let's do it. 26 kills. Uh, this is the most I've ever had on a curse. I mean, there's a the one where you can like break in and you get like 50 or 30 or something like that. But, I mean, those don't count. Like this is like a genuine 26 enemy curse because all the curse chests were placed right next to each other. The first thing I'm going to do is because I know there's no elites on the left side of the map. So we're going to go there right away. We're going to look for everyone. We're going to try to get everybody. Now I just need the perfect way to uh, get them both at the same time. It's two down, 24 to go. 23. I'm actually a little disappointed I didn't leave as many enemies on the map. And I remember thinking the same thing, and I had no idea how I didn't leave as many enemies as I thought I did. And then I kind of realized that, yeah, like I had actually gotten hit. That's why the kill, the kill counter is pretty low. It's not really an accurate representation. So run away from the run away from that enemy whenever you can. And I don't have a cho I don't have a choice but to um, aggro that elite. Like there was no way I was gonna be able to get away with that. But uh, get away without getting hit. Really, really nice. It's looking good. We're looking good. I'm 
just taking my time here. Just playing like a coward, and that's totally fine to do. It's completely acceptable sometimes. Because it's dead cells. And we got some nice looking enemies over here. Including my some of my least favorite enemies in the game. The little worm dudes. I was uh, just playing it extremely safe right here. And that's three enemies left. And we clear out the curse. 30, uh, 26 enemies killed on that curse. And honestly, in reality, it was 30 because I, I was in the middle of my first one, and I got it. I was really, really proud of myself for that. I don't typically um, do curse chests like that. I, and I almost always take acceptance because it's safe. It's just a very simple hit and run, because I wanted my 60 really badly. Finally upgrade the wolf trap after what seemed like ages. And I saw that scroll very, very last second, so I'm glad that I got it. Now we're going to head into um, the last uh, so the last biome with Curse Trust, Forgotten Sepulchre. We're going to head into there with 26. And we're going to get an additional 7, based off the 2 curse chests and 5 amulets. So, we're sitting real good right now. <clears throat> and it was absolutely necessary for me to take that, uh... That, uh... Uh, turkey breast because it's a tactics build and I need as much health as I can take because especially with the glass cannon build like this it's melee tactics like the chances of me getting hit are significantly higher the chances of me doing a lot of damage are also significantly higher so that that also shouldn't be ignored but you know like I, I sometimes you need to play it safe and you can give up a little bit of money to do that. that's why I always have tonic unlocked on my runs As tempting as it is to take any of these, um, you know, I, I've got something real good going on right now. It's a pretty special run from what I can see because, you know, I've gotten 16, I've gotten the kill door in every single biome so far. Um, I've only been hit in one biome, and even then, like, I was able to recover pretty quickly. And Sepulchre, I'm not worried about because I have good range on this build. Um, the enemies are pretty fragile outside of failed experiments who, you know, aren't annoyingly bulky like hammers are. They're still, they can still get hit in one shot. <laughs> this invisibility thing is really working out for me. Like, already... And that is so satisfying. Just knocks out every single enemy right there. The tentacle.
And uh, I did have invisibility there. I just wanted to make sure I can aggro all the um, bats first. Just played a little safe. Nothing wrong with that. So now I'm running out of light, but I do see it right there, so we're safe. We're just kind of going through this biome just easily. And invisibility helps a lot even with the uh, knife throwers because they can't see me. And we just barrel through all everyone. And already we're at 60 enemies. We've been in Sepulchre for less than two minutes, I would say. We're already at 60 kills. Like, that's just crazy for me. Like, I've never had a run like this before. So, fun little thing. So, in the room with the spikes where the keys are, I use my head uh, just as a way to play safe because I honestly, I play a lot of tactics. I really don't want to get hit by spikes because if I get hit by spikes, that's at least, with this current build at 429.4, that's at least 60% of my health right there. And there's no way to recover as well. Yeah, it's an easy jump to make, but anything can happen. Like, why even risk it? So with the tentacle, you do want to be a little bit careful because you obviously don't want to uh, use it into spikes. You don't want to uh, kind of be reckless with it, but you do get a lot of freedom with it. So and just on that biome alone, uh, now we're down to five on the curse map. So uh, we're we're sitting pretty healthy right now. And I pretty much just nope out of that because uh, if I get hit, uh, it's not 60%, it's 100% and run is over. So we're going back to the uh, 4 cell door just to uh, kill some enemies off and then uh, just be on our merry way. I love kamikaze bats because they just they count as an easy kill. I mean, for most builds. And if you have slow melee builds, then yeah, it's pain, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. Don't run slow melee if you don't want to get hit by kamikaze bats. Just kidding. There, there's a way you can deal with them. I have a nutcracker build. Um, unfortunately, the as I got a new laptop and the aspect ratio was completely off, so... The video ended up all screwed up, and I only realized that after I got the win, so... I didn't really get much of a chance to, uh, I'm not really going to be uploading it, but it was, the Nutcracker build was pretty good. It was Cudgel, uh, Nutcracker, Wolf Trap, and I think something else. I think a Powerful Grenade or a Death Orb. I, I honestly can't remember. Might have been a Stun Grenade. I don't know. But either way, it was really, really good run. But it's also Nutcracker, you know? Like, so it is, it is very slow. But even the broadsword video that I had uploaded like that, that was able to kill kamikaze bats pretty easily. That was kind of funny because I accidentally ended up on a, uh, I, I accidentally ended up on a uh, completely different platform from when I use a tentacle because the range is like insane. So I thought that was kind of funny. That was probably the uh, best ability I could have gotten there, because I was in such a tight space anyways, and it's a dark tracker, so they go down pretty easy. So the box was nice to get there. The only time I'll ever say that, because the box always generates in the cheap spot for me. Like, I really have a hatred for the box. But 
would have been nice to have three tactics instead of three uh, brutality. Because at the rate this uh, run was going, I could have easily taken, uh, I could have easily gotten to 40 tactics and been completely fine because I'm not taking any hits. And this isn't even bragging about me, like, I would say, like, yeah, I'm pretty decent at the game, but this is all the weapons right here and how flawlessly they work together. Like, it's crazy how good it is. <coughs> and especially with the Predator and Velocity, like, I get, like, an act of speed boost, and honestly, the speed boost helps me out in the, uh, in the darkness because if there's a long patch where you know I need to start um, you know looking for light like it it helps just wanted to play that as safely as possible and uh, curse chests are completely done for this run, and uh, that was the first run in a very long time that I had taken without acceptance, so I'm very proud of myself for that as well. But 33 tactics uh, by the end of uh, Sepulchre is really good. So I'm pretty much looking at a, I want to say, hopefully a 36 to 37 by the end of this run. I'll be at 35 by the end of, uh, minimum I'll be at, by, at 35 by the end of High Peak Castle. So it's just a matter on uh, what dual scrolls I get, because there's going to be four, uh, two dual scrolls in High Peak Castle in addition to the two colorless ones, and there's two dual scrolls in um, Astrolab. And I took that because of the uh, uh, poison self synergy. So now my max is going to be at 30. Uh, my minimum is going to be at 34 by the end of this run. Still an still an excellent total. So Timekeeper is going to be a little tricky, uh, but basically just lay down the Wolf Trap and Turret first before doing anything. Rely on Shrapnel Axis to really do the job here. And once I get past that first phase, I'm a little more confident. And perfect fight. And Tentacle really helped me avoid the uh, Falling Crystals. Again, like, this run is just going by great. Like, I've only taken hit in one biome. Everything else has been perfect, including two bosses so far. And this run's not even synergy dependent. It's all Predator. And I would say initiative has a role as well. I really don't like 50% uh, added damage when you're at max HP. I think it's a very bad mutation. It shouldn't be rare, first of all. Uh, it's just not because you're gonna get hit at some point unless you're running a curse sword build like you're probably getting hit Perfect runs are very rare. So 50% like then I got to go look for healing item and it's just a pain and against bosses. It's completely useless So I rarely ever take the 50% uh, mutation. There's no point for me in taking it. I, I would take it if I like ever ran a Cursed Sword run. I don't really want to run a Cursed Sword. Just not my thing. 
I know it's like a big challenge and it's like the biggest bragging rights thing ever, but for me, it just doesn't. Inquisitors scare me, so... <laughs> scare me more than most enemies. I would say the other enemy that also scares me would be the... Um... Whatchamacallit? The Slashers in Prison Depths. I hate them. I hate them with a passion. And, uh, we're about to battle one, so... <laughs> it's my luck. I don't know how I didn't get hit there. Like, legitimately do not know. And again, just another close call. I'm really playing with fire here, so... And you're going to see that that playing with fire is going to get me... It's going to really cost me. Um, it's not happening now, but it will happen at some point. So I just went as far to the left that I could and just used the... Shrapnel Axe's uh, ranged ability, so that was a situation in which the ranged really helped for Shrapnel Axe's. We still have the Velocity buff going on, so I can uh, make use of my uh, invisibility. So that was close. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't end up getting hit, so I'm not that bothered. I mean, really, it wasn't a matter of getting hit by uh, the Lancer. It was getting hit by the spiked balls. That's always the trouble. I mean, the, that's what I struggle with in Death Souls anyways, is getting hit by the uh, spiked balls. And we're going for the second key now, and it's going to be the double uh, Dark Trackers. I don't know why I didn't... Uh... Oh, that was so nice, though. That was so pretty. Like, that's, that's a gifable moment for me. Like, I was so happy with that. And, yeah, right away we're at 60. Like, that's the sort of thing that I want to put on a, on a, so, on a, like a social media site. Just to show how good Tentacle is. It is a good weapon. Like, I, it's a phenomenal weapon. And I'm just bringing all these enemies up just in case they aggro me. Like, there's no real special reason I'm doing this. Like, it really is not the most exciting thing in the world. And I understand that. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So that's the exit right there, so that's at least nice that I found that right away. And uh, I wasn't expect, definitely was not expecting him to fall, so uh, I got a little bit of 
nice luck there. Although, it wouldn't have mattered. The turret would have taken him out even before he got to me. So, I really don't know how I didn't get the kill there. Like, legitimately confused on how I didn't get the kill there, because I, I, I had the kill. Like, that, it, that wasn't the first time that I killed a Guardian with that exact move. But it only did 95%. So, I mean, I, I kind of understand that not all enemies are created alike in Dead Cells, but... Because of that, that ended up taking out around 80% of my health. I got about 20% of that back, but... You know, I'm running Tactics Melee, I'm gonna get hit. But when I get hit, it's gonna be bad. So, definitely really, really was not happy with that. Like, I was pretty, like, annoyed, I would say. Not upset, but annoyed for sure. But, like, the run's still going. I, I got out of that in time, but, you know, at the cost of a lot of health. But sure, like, you know, it's just, you can't do anything about these things sometimes. You just gotta roll with it. But ideally, you won't have to roll with it. But now I'm completely scared of the Guardians. And that's really nice, because that whole mob right there would have been a complete pain for me to deal with otherwise. And see, that one killed, so I don't understand. But, he, I mean, he was at a little bit of a lower health. But, I mean, either way, it was just incredibly frustrating for me. <laughs> but, uh, we are going to get that scroll, so that's going to be uh, real nice for me. That would be a 34 tactics. Oh. Rampagers scare me, especially because I'm only at 46 health. If I get hit once, I'm getting hit 3-4 times, so that's pretty much run over if I do that. And see, that also knocked out. So, I mean, I'll be on board with the whole not at all enemies are created equal thing for Dead Cells. It's just annoying. <laughs> and I know I'm kind of complaining about the same thing over and over, but... Yeah, I mean, that was 80% of my health right there. So now I'm, I'm forced to play as more cautious because of a kill that should have been a kill. Because otherwise this run has been flawless. Outside of the... A little hiccup in Stilt Village where it didn't really cost me that much health. You know, like... Yeah, Guardians cost me at times uh, because of stuff like this. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I mean, it's not it's an easy enemy to kill. It's just kind of bulky, but... I mean, it's pretty easy to kill. And now I'm playing as scared as possible, so uh, don't mind me. But that extra point in tactics uh, does help with getting the uh, one hit KO. I was really hoping I would get the multiple kills right there. I was really hoping, but didn't happen, unfortunately.
I'm gonna try to take advantage of my invisibility as much as I can, except I don't know how to climb uh, walls, so, you know, that's kind of an issue. It's insane how fast I'm moving here. I don't even know why I considered that for a second, because it doesn't have 100% on poison. I'm not willing to reroll at this point, because I need to go get me some medicine. And for once, I actually uh, remembered to uh, go get food, so I'm proud of myself for that. So I do the economical thing and uh, go all the way and check if there's any uh, tonics on the other end. There isn't, but better to uh, check that first than to go and spend. And I think at this point in the run, I'm just selling everything because there's there's just nothing that I really want. And of course, I forgot the uh, the one thing, the uh, the kebab, the clean kebab that was in the blue door. <laughs> Sticking with the same build, it's just instead of velocity, now we're going with emergency triage because velocity is pretty useless in Astrolab. So this is doing a lot of damage right away, so we're just going to keep it at that. I'm getting a lot better at this fight, weirdly enough. And I almost got hit by that, but last second I was able to dodge, so... So, I don't know why Hand of the King didn't t try attacking me with her, that's why I was being kind of slow about it, but... Hey, I'll take it. Uh, no hit Hand of King. That means that's three of the four bosses that we have uh, no-hit so far uh, with this build. I have actually no-hit collector on this build so far, or before, but um, it was kind of a mess for the rest of the run, so that's why I never like put it up. Oh, well, actually, I know. I think that run was before I started actually taping all of my entire runs. I just want to check real quick what I'm going to get out of that weapon. And again, the 50% shot to pierce all enemies, these are all useless for me. So, I'm going to leave myself at 95,000 because if there's a food shop or something, I don't like in uh, afford things. If there's another weapon I want, I can afford things by the end of the biome. I get like around 100,000 to 
125,000, depending on how many enemies are there. And uh, the goal is to obviously no hit Astrolab because we have no hit through everything but one biome, and we have gotten a 60 slash 30 on every single biome. So right off the bat, we start with my favorite enemy, <laughs> stupid librarian. But hey, that's nice. Uh, I actually get a uh, a dual scroll my way for once on this biome. I have no idea what hit him, but I'll take it <laughs> any day of the week. And I got an amazing amulet here because one two one for scroll output is really really good. I don't know what is happening. Oh, that's because I'm invisible. Yeah, librarians don't like it when you go invisible. I just wanted that librarian to come hang out with me. I don't know why I didn't, uh... There it is. There's, there's our friend. A friend, not so friend. Yeah, and at this point I knew that the tentacle was going to kill everything. So I really wasn't worried. That tentacle is at 15%. It, uh... Good to note that. Or 15% extra damage, excuse me. Yeah, the wolf trap comes very, very handy for those for that enemy. Uh the, the elite version, anyways. It, it can only attack you in one direction for a while. Okay, so this is crazy, because I have two librarians going after me now. And I don't know how I didn't get hit by any of them. Like, that's madness to me. Like, how? How did I not get hit? Like, I mean, I'm happy, obviously. I just don't know how I didn't... I managed to not get hit at all. Like, that's the caveat here, right? And we're just taking care of at least, like, they're slightly buffer enemies at this point. So with them is I'm mainly looking for one thing, which is the extra jumps. Fun fact, Bob, I've only ever fallen all the way down there once. Um, takes about 30 seconds to fall all the way down. I, I don't know what else to say about it, but I was also on a tactics run. I went from 100% uh, health to 1 health. Not 1%, 1. So uh, that is actually, an, oh, that's actually a 1 hit KO on tactics builds. I don't know about um, bulky survival or bulky brutality builds. Um... But I know for sure that it doesn't really work on a uh, survival build or on a tactics build. So don't don't fall. Is my best advice. I don't know why that protector is hanging out there. It's actually kind of annoying. And somehow I get lucky enough so it doesn't do that. I, 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 didn't, really, I didn't really understand that. I'm just going to hang out on here and not 
Um, and I'm lucky that the uh, Slammer never actually saw me, because I would have had to deal with uh, the Librarian at the same time. So this is more typical me getting lost in Astrolab, because I have no idea where to go about half the time. But we have to find it, so there we go. <coughs> that felt kind of unfortunate. So I saw the librarian right there, so we're going to be very tactical about this. And by that, I mean we're just going to use the shrapnel axes and then kill that, kill that lady thing. I don't know what it is. But I do see it right there, so I don't know what, what's taking her so long. I mean, she obviously wants to plummet to uh, get electrocuted to death, looks like. I was playing very scared here, because I just did not want to deal with the, uh, slammers. That's the last librarian, why isn't she coming towards me? There she is. Reading through these elites right now. We only have two left. The worst is when uh, the Librarians and the Bomber both are attacking you at once. That is the absolute worst, because you're going to get hit by somebody. There was literally no need for me to do that, and I went in and I went ahead and did it because I like taking risks sometimes. <clears throat> Both failed experiments dodged me at that point. I I'm not happy about that. Failed experiments aren't difficult, nor are they very powerful. They're just annoying. <laughs> 
that's really what it comes down to for me. Like, they are just annoying to deal with because that it's that stupid dodge attack. Like, I, I have a severe hatred for it now. Also, I feel like the castle is a little bit too tall. It's not hard, it's just... Well, I mean, it's hard, but... It's not, like, overwhelming or anything. It's just kind of boring after a while. Like, I get kind of bored playing it sometimes. Just because of the sheer amount of, like... Annoyance that the, uh... That the, uh, castle provides. But we're finally at the end. We can finally fight those elites. Thank God. And, uh, I don't know how that elite died. I don't really care. I just want to get out of here. But, good news. No hit another biome. So that means we, for every, so the only two biomes we got hit was Stilt Village and Hypey Castle. And Hypey Castle we got hit once, Stilt Village we got hit twice. A total of three hits in these biomes. And no hit on all three bosses so far. Collector, the chances of a no-hit with this build are pretty low, but I was confident I was going to be able to do it. I just, it's just not going to happen sometimes. So now we're going with a pretty completely different build now because uh, there's really no point in having Predator or Initiative in this boss fight. So it's better to have uh, Ripper and Support instead, along with the Triage, obviously. Yeah, so this fight shouldn't be too bad. I think the issue is going to be more so with having to deal with uh, the spin move. Probably the little balls of fire that come down from the sky. Um, those are going to be the two that really get me. Because the ones that fall down from the sky, they don't do any damage. But uh, they it can lead into other attacks. And it can kind of put you in bad positions. I have I've lost uh, a couple runs from that. Trust me, losing, losing a run to Collector is just the worst. Because <laughs> you put all that time and effort... And Collector is a pretty easy boss, and you expect to get the kill, but you don't get it. So we're not doing great on damage right away, you can already tell. But, uh, we do get the heal, at least there, so... It's been a while since I've actually gotten hit by that move, so that's nice. He really likes that down smash move. And that was kind of a miscalculation on my part.
Now we can start doing some real damage. Let's get him with a little quick tentacle shot, and that's it. This game run is over. And overall, pretty amazing run because I got hit a couple times against uh, Collector. That happens. I, but I know hit Hand of the King. I know hit Timekeeper. I know hit Concierge. I know hit Prisoner Quarters. I know hit uh, Toxic Sewers. No hit Rampart. I did get hit uh, twice in Still Village. Um, but made up for it, still got the 60. Got the no hit in Sepulchre. Got hit once. That took 80% of my health in um, High Peak Castle, but we still got the 60. Astrolab didn't get hit and got the 60. I've never gotten all 60s in Bombs. I don't think so. If someone. Has, if someone has noticed that I have, um, let me know. But overall, fantastic run, and I'm going to call it here. Um, thanks for joining me, and have a good night, everyone.